Why would women agree to be sterilized in exchange for $300? Barbara Harris started the program 13 years ago. She has paid addicts in all 50 states and now plans to expand the program to England. Uh, Lynn Paltrow, not a fan of the idea. She is the executive director of National Advocates for Pregnant Women. Welcome to both of you. Barbara, let me start with you here. I know this is a very controversial program. You believe in it so strongly. Why do you think this is necessary? Uh, well, first of all, it's important that people know we don't just sterilize women. It's about long-term birth control as well. And I believe in it because there's no logical, rational reason anybody's yet to give me that a drug addict or an alcoholic should conceive a child that she's not going to be able to care for or keep. And I, I know you've heard the, your critics use some pretty harsh language, calling this Nazi-style social engineering, um, some calling it morally reprehensible. I mean, what do you say to that? I mean, I don't think there's anything moral about a woman giving birth to 8, 10, 12, 21 children that end up in the foster care system. I know that I'm doing it from my heart. I adopted four of eight children born from a drug addict in Los Angeles and watched how they suffered. And those who object to what we're doing, they're not usually willing to adopt any of these children, nor have they, yet they campaign for the right of these women to procreate. And it, along with rest, with, with responsibility has to come along with every right and these they believe these women have a right to procreate but they they're irresponsible uh, Barbara is certainly speaking from experience here so Lynn explain your concerns about the program well we're we are quite confident of her sincerity and we think it's great to help people access services there are a lot of people who want access to contraception and sex ed who haven't been able to get it in this country because of the policies of the last eight ten years uh, there are people who want drug treatment. Forty-eight percent of Americans can't get drug treatment, and they need it. So, so but, people but address who what she's doing specifically, which is which is paying these women to That's either right. get sterilized or get birth control, so they won't have kids. And, and, and given the the what she's lived, what she said, she's adopted these kids who are who are the children of women who are on drugs. What is wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with facilitating people doing things they want to do. What's wrong is stereotyping a whole group of people and saying drug users ought to be sterilized, that there's a class of people who are dangerous by procreating. Then you label their kids as damaged, many of whom aren't, and you label all people who have a variety of drug problems as people who shouldn't have children. And it's the information that she suggests that drug users are all irresponsible, they all have damaged babies, and none but of them I should be procreating. I don't think Barbara is necessarily making those kind of sweeping generalizations. Are you, Barbara? Actually, uh, none of those statements she just said would have come out of my mouth. Um, I live it, I've seen it. I took in an eight-month-old baby girl and they told me that she was always going to be delayed because when she was born she tested positive for crack PCP and heroin. We nurtured her and loved her the same way we did our six birth children and now she's on the honor roll in college. Um, people just need to understand that there's a few that are lucky and there's more than that that aren't lucky. They end up in foster care, they That's never feel loved. About. And it's just not fair to the kids. They're born with you, the cards stacked against them. What do you mean that's what you're talking about? It's she says more are born suffering, more are stacked against them. I've actually looked very carefully at those kinds of statements that are all over her website that she has but, an opportunity here to say. And that's, yeah, that's what's deal, not true. Let's deal with reality, though, because we, we all have, I mean, I mean, I, you know, without passing judgment on these people generally, we all know millions of cases of children, maybe not millions, thousands of cases of children in the foster care system who are really struggling and get passed off. And you're, you're I mean, the language is what bothers you, that it's going to no, stigmatize these kids? We keep going back to blaming a certain kind of group of people. When we say a certain group of people shouldn't have kids and their kids are taken away, we have a problem in this country. And if you look at places like the National Coalition for Child Protection Reform, there are lots of children who are being taken away precisely because of these stereotypes from mothers who love their children but couldn't necessarily overcome their addiction in the short term so, of pregnancy. Sorry, can I just say, and they're taken away and put in foster care systems that are not appropriate for them. And then we say, is there they some have rational the in place, the place in the middle where, where we do, we, I mean, you don't make, again, sweeping generalizations. You examine specific right. cases. And, and Barbara, do you not examine specific cases? And, and I mean, it's not, you know, you're looking for the worst offenders here, am I right? Lynn Paltrow doesn't live in the real world, I don't think, because I've talked to thousands of these women over the last 10 years, and they have told me stories that would horrify you. I just learned the other day about a woman who buried her baby three feet under in the ground at a month old because she didn't want him anymore. Lynn Paltrow doesn't talk to these women like I talk to these women, apparently, because 
These women tell us to never stop doing what we're doing. There's nothing positive that comes to a woman who gives birth to eight babies that are taken away from her and put in the system. That typically leads her deeper into her addiction because she feels more regret about what she's done to yet another child. Barbara and I talk to a lot of women. I talk to children who are in graduate school whose parents had drug problems and they are very happy they were born and that they weren't put into a faltering foster care system. I talk to mothers who have had serious crack problems, some of whom have babysat for my children, who've been able to get into recovery and have healthy children. So it's the stories. She has a story of one kind of family, and I have a story of another kind of family. And where it meets is, yes, people who aren't ready to have children should be encouraged to use contraception to get help. But what I'd rather have a conversation with Barbara and other people about is, why do we live in a country where it's so hard to get drug treatment, why it's so hard to get contraception, and instead we have to claim that we need to pay pay people money to do things they really want to do in the first place, but don't have the help they need. All right. Uh, I, apologies. We're running out of time here. We have to end it there. But uh, it was an interesting debate. Barbara Harris, appreciate it. And, and Lynn Paltrow as well. Thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. Tonight, when we come back.